So, uh, so today we have uh, Sean Wan Chu from uh, here. Uh, so he just joined our department uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, Sean Wan finished up his PhD in 2017 at the University of Houston with Solway Tan. And then he stayed on there for one more year as a medical staff with, uh, with Dr. Tan as well as with uh, Roland Lewinsky. Um, so Sean Wan's an expert in, uh, in physical elastic fluids and numerical methods for these. Um, He's going to be working more in the uh, in the Stokes regime with me of uh, not specialized fluids, but uh, but uh, we're happy that he's joined and uh, look forward to his talk. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for Brian uh, the introductions, and I'm happy to be here as well. And uh, uh, hopefully we can get something very soon, right, for the, the Stokes regions. And uh, I'm honored to be here to give this talk and uh, contribute this community okay so this uh, most likely will just be the other thing i have done in houston okay so far so the topic is a three dimensional uh digital building Laplace multiplier fiducial stone method for simulating the motion of spheres in bandage flow of ultra fluid so ultra fluid is uh, one kind of uh, non-newtonian fluid so uh uh, it's based on its uh, um, modeling. Okay, so we give the names. So there are so many different kind of modeling you can use uh, in uh, uh, numerical simulations. Okay, and uh, so this I we will talk about that later. So this is a joint work with uh, uh, Dr. Tong Wei Pan, which is my uh, thesis advisor when I was a PhD student, and uh, and his advisor uh, Dr. Kumaski. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, so to this talk, uh, uh, first I will uh, show you some previous work and give you some idea like that uh, why we are interested in this topic. And uh, then we develop the methods uh, to show you how we, how we did it and then give you some uh, idea about the numerical results okay? so you can see uh, what we get over, over here. Okay, so, um, so you can see now this is uh, uh, a multi-particle dynamic system. Okay, you can see there are all particles, small particles in a Stokes flow. So this is the most studied topic in non-Newtonian fluid, okay, uh, which is the particle alignment, okay, in the uh, uh, Stokes uh, suspensions. So I shared the suspensions. So uh, you can see uh, the particle will align, okay, along uh, the full directions. So the full direction is going uh, from uh, here to go to the up, go up, and then uh, the uh, alignment. This line will getting longer, okay, when the shear rate is getting higher, okay. And another features for this kind of phenomenon is, okay, when uh, the particle form a line, the uh, Angular velocity of the particle in the line will reduce, okay, if you compare with those uh, uh, angular velocity of the isolated particle. So uh, this is a very uh, uh, peculiar uh, phenomenon. But the thing is, uh, we don't know, okay, the we, we, we don't understand the details behind this phenomenon and we don't find a good way to reproduce it numerically. So now, um, so you know how hard if we, we put particle uh, in the fluid and maybe, yeah, somehow, so and numerically to solve it, so this is uh, one approach is we simplify the systems by we just consider uh, considering two particles. So, um, can I ask a question? Yes. Is that, is that uh, do you see this in a Newtonian fluid too or just? It's non fluid. Yeah, only non You don't see. Change. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think so. So this is very unique for non-Newtonian fluid. Yeah. I guess it's because it's uh, it's uh, elasticity, so forms those particles to be a chain. Yes. Is this in all non-Newtonian fluids, or just in the type we talk about? Oh, it's all non-Newtonian. Okay. So, for example, for this one, it's experimental pictures. So the Ultra B is a model for numerical uh, simulations. So basically, so uh, you can use many different uh, numerical uh, modeling to try to find, figure it out if you can get this phenomenon. But uh, for this one, it's an experimental result, experimental pictures here. Okay. So, um, 
So here are two experimental results in core flow uh, of two different kinds of the non-Newtonian fluid. So you can see that one is the uh, worm-like mysterious solutions, which is in picture A, and the other is uh, also sorry. So these two are the trajectory, okay, of the particle of the two particles. So uh, the B is the uh, shear Fini viscoelastic polymer solutions. Okay, so here they recall the, the uh, trajectory of particles and they use a WI. WI is mean Weissenberg number, it's a parameter of elasticity. So they use this uh, to control the elasticity of fluid. So they recall the trajectory uh, in a non Newtonian fluid. So there are two kinds of non Newtonian fluids over here. Okay, so that's the experimental result. So uh, and for the uh, computational uh, simulation, <coughs> so Dr. Choi's use a finite element with uh, uh, arbitrary Lagrangian uh, older uh, scheme with the uh, uh, deformation mesh, okay, to research the, uh, the particle behavior in 2D discussy flow. Okay, so and uh, there are two uh, behavior they found. So one is passing motion, the other is uh, uh, return. So patient passing motion is like this one. Okay, and the return motion is like this too. Okay, so uh, I will show you some idea or video or uh, pictures later to, to show you that uh, how they looks like. Okay, so, uh, so also in uh, Jung's uh, data Young's uh, they use uh, uh, finite elements with uh, adaptive mesh, okay, to research the uh, two ball interactions in three D ultra B fluid, okay. So when, once you see the three D ultra B fluid, it means they are doing the numerical simulations, okay. So uh, and you can see they they found okay. So uh, you cannot see that, but I uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. So they they found uh, beside the passing and return motion, they've also found the. Uh, uh, Tumbling and kayaking motion. So for kayaking motions, okay, uh, in picture A is uh, trajectory for kayaking motion. So I will explain this later as well. Okay, I will explain this uh, later. So uh, picture B is a uh, uh, phase diagram with respect to the distance, which is uh, uh, about the initial uh, positions of the particle and the uh, Weissman number. Okay, you can see they're using this to show you where we're gonna find out the tumbling or uh, passing or written motions. So in this talk, I will show you the investigations uh, I, we, we, we do and uh, about the, uh, uh, the behavior of a sphere in 3D uh, ultra big fluid, okay? So, uh, so first of all, it's a setup. So we consider uh, a bounding region omega filled with a viscose elastic fluid of ultra big type and we put two particles, B1, B2, in it with the uh, set of mass G1 and G2. And talk about the governing equations. So we have two parts of the governing equations. First part is uh, motion of fluid. So motion of fluid, since now we are, we are doing, uh, a, we're doing Stokes flow, so, uh, so equation one is the Stokes equations with uh, pressure P, solvent viscosity V. And D is a deformation tensor with respect to the uh, fluid velocity U. And eta is elastic viscosity. Lambda 1 is realization time. Uh, and the C is conformation tensor. DF here is the uh, fluid uh, density. OK, don't worry, it's just some parameter. OK, we, we won't control uh, everything. Some of them will be uh, just a fixed number. OK, um, then we will talk about that later. So don't worry about this parameter. Just want to introduce it a little bit. And equation four is a non-slip conditions. And the x here, OK, is a point on the surface of particle. So basically, you can see, and it thinks the gi is the central mass, so g, gi x is a vector outward of the particle, basically. Okay, so uh, equation five is a constitutive equation of a conformation tensor C. Okay, this is uh, how we uh, describe our motion fluid. Are these solid particles or are there fluid inside the particles as well? Later. Okay, okay. so it's just first part, right? Okay. So once we talk about the uh, uh, motion of a uh, particle, then we put it together, then, then we will talk about that part. Okay. okay. So the, now we just have the, have the uh, uh, equation for fluid, 
right now. We don't we don't talk about so you can see for the uh, so what kind of part yeah are for they? the domain you can see we we just we don't include the B. B is the the region of particle, right? Uh -huh. So so far we don't we don't say anything about particle, so far. Okay. So and uh, here something need to tell us about how to define mu and uh, eta. Okay, mu is solvent viscosity and eta is the elastic viscosity. We define it by uh, eta one, which is fluid viscosity, and uh, uh, relaxation time lambda one and relaxation time lambda two. Okay. So now is the second part of the. <coughs> Governing equation, which is the uh, motion of particle. So uh, the, you can see uh, here, uh, MPI is the mass of particle, and uh, IPI is the inertia of particle, and uh, FI is the hydrodynamic force, and TI is hydrodynamic torques. Okay. So now, just like uh, 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 Brian asked, uh, so now. So basically, the methodology we are developing is we want to combine the particle, this uh, the motion of particle and motion fluid together, and we can solve it uh, simultaneously. So this is our goal. So in order to get that, so first of all, I'm gonna introduce the uh, the main part of this idea. So how to get this? So it's a uh, DOMFD, the, the, the one the one you see on the title, which is distributive Lagrange multiplier and the fictitious domain method. Okay, then uh, since we, we want to do the numerical, uh, do this thing numerically, so uh, for time discretization, we'll use uh, operator splitting, or we say this scheme. Okay, and then for spatial discretization, we use a finite element. Okay, so the detail is here. So first of all, about the uh, Laplace multiplier and fictitious domain. So uh, so first of all, okay, to solve this problem, we use uh, variation formulation to combine the motion of fluid and motion particle. And since we want to solve it easily, for example, we want to solve it in a simple shape domain. So we extend the motion of fluid inside the region of particle with rigid body motion constraints because the particle is not really act acting like fluid, right? So we kind of using this way, uh, first of all, we extend the motion of fluid inside the particle, but with the constraint. So it's still act acting like a particle, okay, after all. So this is the way. So you can see, uh, and then since it's a constraint, right, uh, we have, if we have a constraint, we, can, we don't know how to solve it, so then this is why we have the Lagrange multipliers coming, okay? So uh, we use these five uh, function spaces, okay, to to develop this. So and uh, um, we also need the uh, inner product for the Lagrange multiplier. And since our Lagrange multiplier space is, uh, which is uh, sigma t, is h uh, one spaces, h one space. So uh, naturally, we will choose uh, the inner product for h one, okay which means there's no D over here. Okay, so right now, uh, so you can, uh, you can see, uh, actually, this, the, the uh, inner products I, I list over here is equivalent to the inner product of H1, but with some information from this systems. So what the D gonna be? So it will be uh, the characteristic uh, length in this problem. So the best uh, um, candidate will be the uh, diameter of the particle. So usually we will do that. Okay, usually we will do that. So once we have this uh, uh, function space spaces, so we are able to write down the uh, uh, formulations. Okay, with the constraint like this. Okay, and this is this part is the conformation uh, constitutive equations. Okay. Uh, Basically, that's everything I want to say for the for this part. So uh, right now, okay. So for time discretizations, okay. So we are so actually we are facing these initial value problems, 
Okay, but uh, sometimes it's really hard to solve it. So we want to use a clever way to solve this uh, initial value problem by we solve it separately. So we kind of split the initial value problem into many sub-problems by, okay, so first we see uh, A could be decomposed in a series of operator. Then uh, we will have a sub-problem like this in each time step. Okay, so for example, if uh, you have uh, operator A could be decomposed as A1 and A2, so in each time step, basically you will have two subproblems. So uh, for example, so which means J is equal to two over here, so you will have two subproblems. So we kind of use it this way to solve it, okay, uh, for the time discretizations. Okay, so this is an example of how we use it in our systems. So this is, uh, um, we use uh, this scheme to split the cons constitutive equation into three subproblems. Okay, so uh, if you remember the constitutive equation, let me show you that uh, a little bit. Okay, okay we kind of uh, split, uh, Yeah, we split uh, into three subproblems to solve this one. Okay, so this is the original one. And after that, you see we use this uh, scale, okay, to separate into three parts, three subproblems. Okay, so this is an example how we use the least scheme in, in this problem. Okay, so, uh, uh, so right now, if we want to solve this problem numerically, we still need to do one thing is that we want to find out the uh, finite dimensional spaces and you can do the numerical approach. So here uh, we use a piecewise linear finite elements with the uniform hyperstructure mesh. So you can see, for example, in figure five, this is, some, this is the uh, hyperstructure mesh, okay. <coughs> So that edge, so now right now edge is, uh, so you will see the edge in the whole slide. Okay, edge is the uh, mesh size. Okay, and then we choose the uh, P1, P1 iso P2 finite element space for uh, velocity field and the P1 finite uh, element space for pressure. Okay, so we're going to need the two different uh, uh, uniform mesh. One is uh, T2 edge, or the, one is T edge, the other T2 edge, okay, for the velocity and the form of pressures, okay. Okay, so here we, uh, this is the finite dimensional uh, spaces we need to, uh, to get our approach. So we have the finite dimensional space for velocity and uh, the finite dimensional space for the pressure, and the finite dimensional space for um, conformation tensor, and uh, finally, it's the finite dimensional space for the Laplace multiplier. And we define this by the uh, direct major delta, okay, direct major delta, okay. And also, we need a pairing, okay, associate with the, a set of points, which is, uh, uh, which cover the, the particle evenly. Okay, we need a need a something like pairing. You can see it's like an inner product, but now we are doing the pairing. Okay, for the Lagrange multiplier, it's over here. Okay, so uh, give you some idea about the cover the particle evenly. It's uh, so you can see there's some collect points on the surface of particle. Okay, uh, cover the uh, surface evenly. So also in, inside the particle. Okay, so if you, because I, I, I don't know how to show you inside the particle, but it's just the surface. Okay, the point on the surface so far. So, uh, however, okay, this uh, pair is not acting very well. Once you, we are doing uh, numerical simulation, it might cause the breakdown sometimes, or it will be like, uh, this is, the particle is not act, acting like the, uh, like the uh, experimental result. So, okay, we do, a modified 
uh, pair pairing over here. So right now we still have those kind of points, but right now we separate the points into two sets. So um, we use uh, uh, so one set of points. So we still have the old form like this, okay, and the new pairing form. So uh, what the difference between these two points? So for example, if x is a point uh, from this set, okay, and uh, so uh, if the distance of x from, uh, from x to the boundary of particle is less than a uh, certain uh, distance, for example, ch over here, usually we use uh, h over half, so we usually we let c equal to half, okay? If the distance is less than uh, h over two, Okay, we will use this uh, this part of the pairing. Okay, and uh, for the uh, otherwise we'll use the original one. Okay, otherwise we'll just use the original one. And the second part of this pairing is divided by these DH functions, and this DH function is divided by the direct matrix uh, delta H, which is created by uh, Dr. Perskin. Okay. So am I too fast about this? <laughs> so uh, we can slow down a little bit. So uh, while when we are doing this, okay, this is kind of like uh, we uh, spread the rigid body motion a little bit out of the boundary of particle, okay, in order to make the I guess in order to make the shape uh, uh, as a sphere still. So we kind of doing this uh, in the numerical uh, simulations. Okay, better than the previous one. Better than the previous one. Because I try both. I try the pure uh, uh, pairing, and I also try the this hybrid one. Okay, so uh, after all, the hybrid one is better. So, okay. So now uh, I think you see the whole pictures. So uh, we already uh, been through the. Uh, Lagrange multiplier, the fictitious domain, and we know how to do the time discretization. We also know how to do the spatial discretizations. So here, then we just put everything together. So in order to solve this uh, fluid particle system, so first of all, we reduce our problems into a finite dimensional uh, space. Okay. Then we use uh, um, so uh, that part I, I skip. Uh, I, I, will, I will mention that later. So we use some matrix factorization to deal with the uh, conformation tensors with the least scheme, okay? Then you can see the algorithms over here. So it will be a little bit uh, different than I said when we go into, when we are going to the conformation parts, okay, constitutive equation parts, so it should be fine. So uh, the idea is first we predict the positions of particles, okay? Then we set up the, Conformation tensor equal to identity inside the region of particle. Then um, we enforce the rigid body motions in the region of particle. Okay. Then we solve the uh, fluid velocity and pressure by this uh, equations twenty nine to thirty one. And then we solve the uh, division part of constitutive equations. So you can see now this is the uh, factorization I mentioned earlier. Okay, we, we kind of do this, and uh, since I think this is uh, too too much detail, so I, I just too many details. I just uh, skip it a little bit. Uh, it's not. Uh, I think it should be fine. And then uh, so if you remember, we have uh, three subgroup uh, sub problems for constitutive equations, right? So this is uh, uh, the other two parts, two uh, parts of the sub problems of uh, constitutive equations. Okay, so in this four steps, something I want to mention. So first of all, it's about step one. Okay, so since uh, usually uh, we will face, we are facing this uh, like uh, the particle overlapping when we are doing the particle fluid simulations. So the way we prevent the particle overlapping is we set up a mini minima gap. So uh, how does this minima uh, gap works? So uh, uh, first of all, you can see in each time step, okay, we will have, uh, before we get the new position of particle, we will have uh, old positions, old position, and then after we solve the step one, we finish the step one, we get new positions, right? 
So right now, after we've done the step one, so we get a new position to the particle. So now we try to, uh, we check the distance between these two particles and check if the distance is more than the uh, minima gap, okay? If the distance is more than the minima, minima gap, we are fine, okay? Then this new position is what we want, okay? If right now the new positions, uh, the distance between, between two particles is less than this minima gap, then we're gonna do something else. So first of all, we pick up the old position back, then we do, um, we use a sub time step. For example, if now the time step uh, is uh, 10 to a negative three, so now we kind of like divide by 10, we do 10 to a negative four and uh, advance the particle again and see if the distance between two particles is still less than CH or less, uh, or less than the minima gap or not. If it is good, then this will be our new uh, uh, particle positions. So that's is a little bit simplify what the, what I have on the slide, okay? Because we still do something something else, but uh, that's is the idea we, we want to I want to show you, okay? So we kind of put it back back to the original uh, old positions, and we put it just a little bit, not that much, okay? With the small time step, smaller time step. A quick question. Yes. And how do you set CH? Okay, so CH here in the um, um, later the numerical simulation we have is one over sixteen. So then you will ask why not one over eight? Why not one over twenty four? Right? <laughs> yes. So we have we have the same concern. So we did. So later I will show you. Okay. So no matter it's one over sixteen, one over twenty four, one over thirty two, the uh, the behavior will be the same. The uh, particle behavior will be the same, or the trajectory will 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 be consistent. Okay, that is very important because we kind of set up something and nobody knows it's it gonna work or not. So yes, so that's very good questions. So you will see it. So I sorry you guys have to wait until we get the numerical part. Yeah, so uh, we will see it. Okay, so uh, so this is a uh, one of set up uh, in uh, the detail I want to say in uh, step one, and step two, three, four will be faster. So uh, since I'm uh, gonna quote this uh, papers, I won't go for the details. Okay, so basically in step two, uh, uh, we are using the uh, Uzawa type uh, graded descent, conjugate graded method, sorry. And in uh, step two, we use uh, wave like equations method to solve it. And the equation for uh, step four is the easiest one because if you are, you, 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 you check it, uh, you see the details, you will see actually equation, uh, step four, we can solve it directly. We have the exact solution, so we don't have to use any numerical scheme to, to solve it, okay? So basically that is the, the whole picture is how we solve it from uh, top to bottom, okay? So right now we start our, okay, uh, numerical results, so since this is the method, nobody used that before, so we have to validate it uh, in some, some sense. So first of all, we use our angular velocity for a single particle to validate to others' uh, uh, numerical simulations. Okay, so in this, so we have two different uh, uh, ex uh, the simulations for angular velocity. So the first one is about, we change the radius of the particle and see uh, what kind of the uh, angular velocity you're gonna have, okay? And here you can see, uh, okay, one thing I haven't mentioned is, actually we, we are using a periodic boundary condition on x1 direction and x2 direction. So it means that if your ball is very close to the edge of the, uh, maybe on, on here, okay? If your ball is very, if that is the, the fluid directions, and if your ball is very close to here, and next time step, it might appear from here. Okay, so that's mean we are doing the periodic condition. So uh, in order to, since then, which means it might change my behavior of particle. So that's why we make this uh, domain, this really large, okay, it's uh, 20R, okay, R is the radius. So we, want, we, are, we are trying to avoid this kind of uh, effections on the particle. So we are doing that. So here, so we use a, a blockage K. Okay, depends on the radius. And uh, so right now is uh, uh, the radius with the, uh, the height. 
Okay, it's, uh, or you said the distance from between two walls. Okay, between two walls. We want to see that how that gonna affect our uh, angular velocity. And uh, so, uh, and the definition of wavesimple number is a product with of uh, realization time lambda one and uh, gamma dot. Gamma dot is a shear rate. Okay, here shear rate is equal to one. And we fix our particle at zero zero zero. Okay, it won't move any anywhere, just fix over there. Okay. So this is the result we get. Okay, so you can see uh, there are four different ways of numbers. So our result is represented by uh, by star. And uh, uh, there uh, the numerical result in uh, Maxwell flow is represented in, uh, by delta or by uh, triangles. So you can see as uh, one over k is big. Okay, and uh, uh, when number is small, our uh, result is uh, very close to their result. Okay, and so there's just one very weird point is over here. Okay, it's not that well. Okay, so we are thinking about the possibly possible possible reason is okay. First of all, of course, we use a different scheme. And since uh, they are using uh, a little bit the uh, the adopt mesh, and they put the more points, uh, taking points on the surface of boundary, very close. Uh, with that part is very close to wall, so I guess they will get the better uh, angular velocity, uh, more close to. Uh, so I think that one that is the reasons why we get the higher higher one. What, but what yes. does k advance? I'm sorry, what does k advance? Is it 1 over k? Okay. Okay. What does it okay. So basically, it's a ratio of the radius and the. the um, so 1 over k is the confinement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, I would will, I will like to use k. But in their data, they use a 1 over k. But so make it a little bit uh, hard to understand. So sorry about that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's just the that's just the thing. So yeah, you can see actually this is a ratio, okay? So uh, yeah, k is equal to r divided by l three. L three is the distance. I mean, is the um, the the size of domain on the x three directions, okay? So uh, this is a, uh, one of the uh, angular velocity. So the other. Uh, angular, angular velocity test is okay. Now we have a cubic domain, okay, uh, with uh, ten different Wilson numbers. So basically, we we are trying to see uh, how this uh, elasticity things affect the uh, uh, angular velocity, okay, of particle. So now uh, we uh, i is fixed, the radius is fixed, and so is the initial position is fixed, okay. So this is a result. We are trying to find out the best uh, ratio parameter for uh, about lambda one divided by lambda two. Okay. So um, so you can see uh, here the delta is the experimental result in bogus fluid. Okay. We taken from a uh, sneakers paper, double sneakers paper, and you can see as uh, lambda one divided by lambda two uh, equal to one point six. It's a uh, uh, you can fit in this uh, experimental result, okay? So which means our method is uh, good to use, okay? For since you see the angular uh, velocity is not, uh, uh, how to say that, very far away from those uh, other even this experimental result or numerical result, okay? Sorry, what was lambda two? Okay, lambda two is a uh, retardation time. What was lambda one? Huh? I thought that what was lambda one. Yeah. Lambda one is a uh, re 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 relaxation time. Oh. <laughs> so what's the difference? Yeah. Okay, so basically, uh, I remember. two relaxation times. This so relaxation time is like if you have a rubber band, right? If you put it. No, I understand. Yeah. But do you have two relaxation times? This no, it, yeah, there's retardation time. Retard oh, retardation okay, time. Hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. So uh, let, let's see. So that will be the angular velocity. 
two x uh, two numerical simulations. We have, and uh, so now is the time we put two particle inside fluid. So uh, to validate the behavior uh, in new, uh, Newtonian fluid and uh, non-Newtonian fluid, so uh, we, we do Newtonian fluid first, <coughs> and then we do the uh, ultra B type, the non-Newtonian fluid. So here we have this domain with the, uh, and we control the initial positions, okay, with respect to uh, six different vertical displacements, which is delta S, and we divide by R, seems that uh, you can see something like a blockage again, okay? So uh, so R is fixed, uh, which is equal to point 0.1 here. So we want to see what kind of motions we're gonna have, okay? What kind of interaction between these particles, just like what we have in the introductions, okay? Maybe passing, maybe return, or maybe tumbling, something, something else. So this is the result we have. So you can see, uh, so we have two different kinds of trajectory. On the shear plane, shear plane is x2 equals 0. So you can see for the outer three uh, trajectory, we call it uh, passing motion. So passing motion is like two both first approach, then pass with each other. Okay, so we will see a video later. So we, I have to let you wait a little bit. Okay, and then the, uh, the inner three trajectory is called a return motion. I call it return motion. So return motion is like first two ball approach, then repel, then reverse. Okay, that's just the two motion we found in Newtonian fluid. So next is about uh, uh, the motions we found uh, in ultra B fluid. So the same, we have the domain. Okay, the same size of the domain and uh, the, uh, the six uh, initial positions. Okay, with respect to the six uh, uh, vertical displacements. And now we, we use Westman number uh, to control our elasticity of fluid. Okay, so I put the Newtonian, the uh, behavior of Newtonian, uh, the uh, behavior of the particle in Newtonian fluid and with those uh, uh, behavior in ultra B together. So you can see the, the pictures Better. So you can see here, uh, like what we said earlier, we only have two different motions, which is uh, passing motions, and this uh, the circle thing over here is uh, return motions. And as Wesselman number, number equal to point 0.1, you can see we got one new motion, this uh, to the uh, motion in orange, so which is called tumbling motion. So uh, the tumbling motion is like first two ball approach, then they chain, then they rotate on a shear plane, okay? So, and as Wesselman number getting bigger, you will see more and more tumbling motions. So here we just have one, and this we have two, and then we have three. As you get the higher Wesselman number, you get more tumbling motions. And you can see, um, so under the same um, vertical displacement, Okay, so as the waste momentum get any higher, those uh, return motion will be replaced by the tumbling motions. So, <laughs> this is the first diagram to give you some idea. Okay, so you can see, uh, that's what I said. Okay, so as uh, um, D equal to uh, 0.2, you can see when the Westerman number is lower, you get return motion, and over here you get the tumbling motions, okay? You get the tumbling motions. So I'm not only just do like uh, 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 60, I do so many different vertical di di displacement, but uh, it's uh, too, like, too much if I put it together. So, but for face diagram, it's very clear to, to do it. So that's just the, the questions, uh, the answer I want, want to show, show you guys. So right now you can see uh, I'm checking three different gap, the minima gap, so which are uh, one over h over 16, h over 24, and h over 32. And uh, you can see as uh, no matter it is, uh, as what's number equal to 0.75 or what's number equal to one, you can see for the tumbling motions, okay, it fits very well. Okay, it is consistent with respect to different uh, the minima gap. Okay, 
So you, you, you even cannot see the, the three lines because they are exactly so. so maybe so the tumbling motion is stable, so then they never sort of go away. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that will be the next uh, next uh, topic. Yeah, let's, uh, if we still have time. Yeah, so you might ask why I'm not checking pacing motions and the return motions. Did you have these questions? Yes or no? Yes? No? Okay. <laughs> because uh, they will never, that the distance between two body goals will never less than the minima gap. So we don't have to check it. Okay, you will always be the same. We only have to check those uh, particle trajectory which is too close to each other. Okay, for example, it's a tumbling motions. Okay, so also uh, we have to do the about, uh, validations about our own method. So we use, uh, so in uh, our finite element methods, okay, since we use a uniform mesh, so the only thing we increase our resolution is we let the mesh be smaller. Okay, so that's just the way we did. So you can see, usually I do 1 over 48. Uh, for all the simulations, but since uh, for this concern we have to do like more, so it's a uh, so we have three different mesh sizes. It's uh, H uh, equal to one over uh, sixty four and one over thirty two, uh, thirty six. I'm sorry, one over thirty six. To check it, if uh, we do got the same results, same uh, particle behavior. Okay, uh, so if it's uh, uh, return motions as uh, h equal to 1 over 48, so we will get the same thing as h equal to 1 over six, uh, uh, 64 or 30, uh, 36, okay? Something like, th this is the idea. So you can see, uh, I cannot say it's consistent, but it's basically we, we keep the uh, behavior, okay? Motion, uh, the uh, particle behavior, okay? So then, uh, so let's see these four pictures again for the structure. So you can see this is another features in uh, for the trajectory in Newtonian fluid, which is you can see for the passing through motions. Okay. So this is the for example this d is equal to one, right? And uh, or you can say the uh, vertical dis displacement is equal to point one. So after it passing through uh, the other uh, particle the uh, position will go back to the initial uh, vertical displacement. Okay, that's just in Newtonian fluid. However, in non-Newtonian fluid, we won't get that. You can see it's a little bit uh, not, uh, if you can see that's just a little bit uh, take over there. And if you, you don't see this that obvious, you can see this one, okay? So it starts from point one, but here is a little bit slightly migrate, okay? As with Mananda Daily Vega, you can see uh, this uh, migrate immediately over here. Okay, so that's is the asymmetric structures in uh, non-Newtonian fluid. Okay. So also, so since we are talking about that, so we can have a best of idea if you just see one particle. Okay, so this is just one particle as our d equal to one uh, with respect to five different Westman number. So you can see uh, uh, the particle migrate over to the moving wall. Moving wall is over here. Moving walls over here, okay, going that way, okay. Moving walls over there, so you can see as uh, what's my number getting bigger, uh, you will see the migration immediately after the passing through is done, okay. Okay, so then let's see the video, the most exciting part. So, uh, so this is the passing through motions. So you can see once two ball approach, then they will pass with each other. And one thing we can we can see is uh, it's a little bit higher once it passing through, right? A little bit higher than uh, I mean for the vertical displacement, it's a little bit higher. Right? So that is the uh, passing through motions or passing motions, and this is the return motions. Right. So first, two-ball approach, then repel, then reverse. Okay, so this is why we don't really have to check the, uh, the gap, the minima gap. You can see they are so far away. Okay. So we don't really have to check it. And this is the tumbling motions. Okay, first two-ball approach, then chain. Okay, then rotate with each other on the shear plane, which is x2 equals 0. 
So uh, after t is more than six, you will figure out, you will see, you will see something different. Okay, one ball is a little bit overlapped to the other. Okay, because this is a projection. Okay, so uh, right now actually they are not overlapping. They just uh, they still rotate with each other, but now it's not on the shear plane. It's not on the x two equals zero anymore. The uh, center center two centers of ball will just will leave the shear plane and still rotate with each other. So. Uh, in order to know if okay, so first of all, we thought tumbling will will, will be will be the the steady one. Then you will never never leave. Will still keep the chain and keep rotating, right? But turns out it's not. So we have something like kayaking motions. Uh, so which which means it's kayaking motion. So we want to know this kayaking motion better. So we set up another uh, numerical simulations. So now we still use the same size of domain with uh, the six different Weizmann numbers, but we use a different way to set up our uh, initial positions. Okay, initial positions. So we define a gap. Okay, it's not mean gap anymore. It's a gap between uh, the definitions over here, okay, between two particles and the theta as shown in figure 16. Okay, so uh, we are trying to figure out a parameter or parameters to see if we can we can find out the reason why it's uh, tumbling or why it's kayak. Okay, so this is a setup, and this is uh, give us an idea. So, uh, what kind of uh, or how large or how small the, the the parameter we need? For example, here is. Uh, we need to, uh, we need for what? We need for uh, researching the uh, tumbling motion or kayaking motions. Okay, so here you can see, go back. Okay, here you can see uh, as with minimum equal to one, okay, the theta, and as a theta is more than uh, 165, okay, all the uh, gap size. Under all the gap size, we will get the uh, chaining motions, which it might be uh, tumbling or tumbling in kayak. Okay, so we will focus on this part. Okay, because if it two ball is passing with each other, then we got nothing. Passing is passing, then okay, we, we won't have any more interactions after passing through motions. Okay, so uh, give us give us some idea. So this this is the trajectory we have on the shear plane. Of this setup, so you can see as with some number equal to point one, we only have a tumbling motions, and as with some number getting larger, for example, point five and uh, point seven five and the uh, one, we will have beside the tumbling motion. You can see the the throwing over here. Actually, this is a kayaking motion, but since we kind of we are doing the projections on the shear plan, so you will only see this. So when uh, you say kayaking, what does the motion look like? What is kayaking? So okay, though we can. Think can show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Let me see. What's the next page? Are we there? Yeah, we are there. So okay, the black line okay is the segment of uh, center of mass. Okay, so you can see first of all is a tumbling. I forgot. I cannot use that controller. Okay, this is tumbling, right? We already know that. Okay. So now it starts to kayak. So uh, since this is not the best uh, angle to, to watch this video, so I'm, I made the, the other video to see this. Okay, just stop here. So this is another angle, okay? So you can see, so this is the kayak motions. So uh, x2 equal to zero, Okay, is the shear plane, right? So if it's a tumbling, these two particle will just uh, rotate on the shear plane. But right now you can see the two center of mass is out of x two equal zero. Okay, so this is what we call the kayak. This is what we call the kayak. Okay, so um, also we want to compare these motions with the uh, low body motions. Okay, so uh, here are. To trajectory, 
This one is from the particles, center of mass of particle. This is the tip orbit of the uh, ellipsoid. Okay, so you can see that it looks very similar. Okay, so we are trying to uh, build up this idea to see, okay, actually, so this is a specimen number equal to one. Okay, we want to compare uh, uh, the two particle with the lone body or with the ellipsoid. So actually we can set in some sense, under some circumstance, the two particle can, uh, act, in, can, can act like a lone body, okay, loosely, because they are not uh, really attacked with each other, okay, loosely. Okay, so that's my last slide. So this is the conclusions. So basically, just uh, uh, conclude all the things we have. I have earlier. So we have uh, pressing return motions, and then uh, in ultra B we have uh, tum tumbling and tumbling and kayaking motions, and then um, yeah, there's nothing new over here. Okay, so uh, so future works. Beside the thing over here, that's the one thing, one question I want to ask is what after, what, what now? So after kayaking motions, if you remember, actually what we want to know is the alignment, right? The property of alignment. So what, what about kayaking motion? So we still don't know if kayaking motion, it will keep kayaking or not. So far uh, in August, uh, what I have done is, okay, I saw the two particles just go up to the up wall. Then they kind of stopped uh, uh, rotating because the structure restrictions. Doesn't mean that's not kayaking. So I still don't know how to like uh, uh, adjust it a little bit and let it uh, uh, get the goal we want. So uh, another topic I was researching on is the uh, shear thinning. So we are trying to. So we read some paper. We are trying to. Okay. Uh, we're still using Ultra B, but we changed the, our uh, model a little bit and see if uh, we change the parameter and if we can get the, the uh, particle channel or not. Okay, so that will, that will be the future work. Okay, so, uh, so uh, thank you.